last week we had a wonderful sermon from uh, Sam. Sam was sharing the word of heart, heart issues, heart habits, correct? Of how we do things regularly on our day-to-day basis, which is good for God, which develops us, which makes us better in everything that we do. Wonderful sermon. Thank you so much, Sam, for that. Praise God for that. So let's move to today's topic. Today's title is called, I Need Milk. In times of trouble, desire the word. We are on First Peter. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about how Peter addresses the church when the church is in trouble. And then why the church was in trouble is because all the Christians were in Rome. Emperor Nero is upset. He wants to expand. No, he's not upset, actually. He wants to expand his palace and things. He destroys the city. Three-fourths of the city is destroyed. And in order to blame somebody, he blames the Christians and the Jews. And then they were all sent out. Many were put in prison. Many Christians fled the nation into Asia Minor. Seeing them, Peter said, we need to write something. Let's write and encourage them. And Peter writes these letters to the church at that time. And we were talking about it last few weeks. The first topic was on hope. When we in troubled times, when you have troubled times, what do you do? Hope for the future. Hope for the things. Don't think about what you lost, the homes that you lost, the property that you lost in Rome. But think about what you're going to have in heaven, the future home that is kept for us in heaven. That's what Peter is telling people to focus on. Don't focus on what you lost. Focus on what you're going to get in the future, the eternal, uncorruptible seed. Then we saw Peter is telling to be holy. In times of trouble, be holy. People are watching you. When in times of trouble, are you cursing somebody? Are you cursing your boss? Are you cursing the government at that time? This government, uh, the BJP government or the Republican government, you keep cursing people. That's not what you're called to do. You're called to be holy, set apart, somebody special. People should not find a fault in you. Be holy as I am holy. That's what the scripture says. Then we saw about in times of trouble, love one another. Love one another. These are things you don't do when you're in trouble, right? Suppose, for example, you have a trouble, uh, you fall sick or you lose your job. You don't think about future, love, holiness. But Peter is encouraging the church, please focus on this. It will make you a better believer. Love one another. Like the three brothers, three friends, sorry, not brothers, three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they stuck together in times of trouble. When they were about to be thrown into the fire, they still stayed together. One of them had great faith. The other one didn't have probably great faith. But they said, even though if God doesn't deliver us, we will still not bow down to the worship. So love one another. Love. Love as much as the first century Christians were. That they were known to love each other. The first century Christians. It's recorded that they were known to love each other. Let us also love another. And today is going to be desiring milk. How many of you like milk? I can see the faces. Some of them are, some, some of them like hands going up fine. But there are people who hate milk. The smell of it, the taste of it, the lactose intolerance of it. A lot of people don't like milk. But here the scripture says, desire milk. So let's turn our scriptures to First, Spirit, First Peter, where Peter talks about how he's encouraging to us. He said, Verse 1 of chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Goes like this. So, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Verse 2. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. Verse 3. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Amen. So let's pray. Father, speak to us from your word. Let your Holy Spirit, let your spirit move in our hearts that we will understand what Peter, what you have inspired Peter to write and that we'll be blessed by this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The first verse is, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy, envy and all slander. The message translation says like this, so clean house. Make a clean sweep of malice and uh, uh, pretense, envy and hurtful talk. What are all this? What is Peter trying to say? What are these five things Peter is telling to keep? He says to put away, keep away. So let's look at one by one and understand are we doing any of this? Five 
putaways, which Peter is highlighting here to the believers. Remember, the believers are in exile. They've lost their property. They've lost their lo loved ones, maybe. And they're in a foreign land, probably trying to get a job, trying to do something to make a living. Peter tells them, put away these five things. Which are the five things? Number one. Number one is malice. What is malice? Malice is nothing else but evil, you can say. Badness. Viciousness. Desire to harm somebody. Wickedness. These are all adjectives of malice. Keep away, put away evilness. Evil is so bad, you know. How many of you think evil? How many of you think evil when the boss walks in? Or when your teacher walks in? Evil, evil. Some people are you know, in, uh, born in, you know, it comes naturally to think evil of it. I'll give an example. The last uh, Tsar of Russia, the Sultan of Russia, whatever you call him, um, Nicholas II, he fell down or he lost his empire because of one person. That's what everybody credits to. The reason why communists came into power is also because of this monk. It's, he's called a mad monk of Russia called Gregory Raps, Rasputin. Not the normal Putin, Rasputin. Raspberry Putin, whatever. This monk, self-declared monk, becomes so influential in society because he had certain kind of healing powers. So it seems when Nicholas II and his wife Alexandria, they had only one child, one son, and the son had kind of some kind of a cancer, blood cancer. Nobody could treat him at that time. But this monk, uh, Gregory Rasputin, used to go and pray, and he used to be well. Because of that, he had a great influence with the royal family. It started by a simple prayer, and then his influence grew. And this guy was not good in nature. He was evil in his nature. Because of his influence, he started, uh, he started a lot of um, corrupt things happening. Getting favors done. Getting uh, wrong people on board as judges and things like that. He, his influence is so, he's so bad that it, the society on the whole hated him. Even the Greek Orthodox Church condemned him. And, you know, they said he's no more part of a monk. He cannot be declared part of, a, even as a Christian. And finally, later, he was assassinated by one of the nephews of Nicholas. But what happened is, because of this evil man's actions and deeds, a whole empire fell off. 300 years, the czars of Russia were ruling. But because of this, this was the, the, the icing on the cake, like, because of this monk, the full empire fell down, and the Communist Party takes over. Evil intentions, evil desires does not play good. And in our lives too, if you ever think of doing evil things, malice, vicious things, things to harm people, keep away from that. Peter says, put off evil, right? Put off evil. Tell to your neighbor, put off evil, put off malice. Yeah? Number two is craftiness. Peter says, put off craftiness. What is craftiness? Deceit, trickery, telling something to make somebody fall. Have you seen that? You tell something so that that person will take action against somebody else. Like a bait, putting them in trouble. There was once a case of, a, of a, two neighbors who had a fight. Not a fight. Although it started like this. One person's property was good. The other person's property was a marshy land. But the person's uh, property was good. He saw that this marshy land had a lot of potassium. When he came to know, he wanted to get this land for cheap from this other neighbor. So he went to his neighbor and said, this is useless marshy land. It's not value at all. I'll buy it from you. I want to graze my cattle in this field. And for $2,000, this man buys that marshy land. And the man who, who's, who's owner of the marshy land was like, wow, this is great. I got money. And he was happy for that. Later on, when the deal all took place, the man who, from whom the man who bought the land started digging and extracting potassium and selling. When, when the, the real owner, the old owner came to know about it, 
he felt he was cheated he was it was deceit it was craftiness on this part he went to court he went in court and said this was my land this guy cheated me and he told me that i'm going to use it for the cattle but he is now digging up minerals and selling i want my money back the judges all came together and said this the man who bought the land didn't do anything wrong by hiding information that there was potassium but he did wrong by telling the owner that this land is of no value he cheated by saying to the owner that it had no value because of that the judge asked him to pay compensation to the old owner deceit craftiness trickery that should not be part of us let not words come out of mouth to put somebody else in trouble i know in the work in the work atmosphere the politics is really bad you instigate wrong things into your colleagues so the colleagues will get angry and do something and they will be at fault right there are people who do it among siblings i remember when we were kids and fighting you know my sister or my brother will do something to instigate something you know so then somebody will make the noise but the real guy is the culprit who is keeping quiet so people like that deceitfulness cunningness let us let it not be a part of our life okay, tell your neighbor no deceit not see third thing peter tells here is keep away hypocrisy hypocrisy what is hypocrisy Hypo- hypocrite means you're not what you say hypocrisy uh, the hypocrisy comes from the word of being an actor actors are called hypocrites actually because they they are acting a role which they are not that is hypocrisy um in france there is a restaurant many uh, dating men like this restaurant this restaurant is so peculiar because it's got two types of menus when you go into the restaurant with your girlfriend the the waiter the guy at the bell counter he will give you one menu to the man and he'll give another menu which is looks the same exactly the same to the girl the difference is that the man's the menu prices on the man's menu is the correct prices the prices on the girl's menu will be exaggerated exorbitant so they go to sit down and they order and the man is ordering we'll order butter chicken he sees 1 kg but the girl sees 10 kg oh my god butter chicken 10 kg this is too much no 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 we'll buy we'll buy it's okay i am paying for it i am paying for it so and then so the impression the girl gets is the man wow he is rich he is lavish he can spend on me wow this must be great a hypocritical menu which is found so this is hypocrisy you say something but it's not so that should not be part of our christian life amen so no hypocrisy come on tell your neighbor no hypocrisy okay um then he, peter says the fourth thing envy envy should be out of our lives envy displeasure of another person's good fortune when somebody gets promotion don't be envious when somebody gets full marks don't be envious be happy for them rejoice with them amen don't be envious of another person there's an italian legend which says there are two guys runners they went for olympics very old time and one of them guy became a winner and he was from a very particular when a remote town or a village where what happened is because of his fame the villagers town decided they will all make a statue to commemorate his victory in olympics so they made a statue but the guy who became second became very envious he didn't like the fact that this first person not not only that he won the medal but he also got statue in his name and people respect him and people know him so what he did in the in the night he used to go to the statue there and chip off a small bit of stone at the bottom of the statue a little small bit he did that frequently every night he used to go there ting chip off one bit stone chip off like that in the dark so nobody will see it it so happened he went kept doing 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 like this why because he wanted to bring down the statue the last time when he went there he chipped off and the statue fell on him and he died so envy so there he goes so envy you know sometimes it's bad <laughs> we should not envy anybody let others if somebody is good if they get uh, recognized for what they did for the achievement be happy for them let not envy be in our lives amen tell your neighbor no envy 
The last thing is put away slander. Put away slander. Don't no evil speaking about others, especially behind their backs. Don't speak bad about others. This is something we all do in our lives, right? At our home, we talk bad about our colleagues or about our friends. Or when somebody is there, you speak. The moment the tone goes low, you know, speaking like that with that. That kind of tone, the moment it goes that, you know you're speaking something which others should not hear. That itself is probably, it's, I don't think it's right. Keep away slander. Don't speak bad about others. So which are the five things Peter says to keep away, put away, which is malice, craftiness, hypocrisy, envy, slander. This should not be in our lives. Our life should not, we should not take part in it. People might do it, the world will do it. But we should be different because we don't do this. That should be a part of our, that should be our values. So when, when people see you, in spite of the troubles that you go through, you don't complain. You don't blame anybody. You're not jealous because somebody else got promoted. No, let them be. You don't speak behind their backs. You don't trick them into saying things so that they will take an action some other way. You don't do that. That's not us. Amen? All of us, ALF, we don't have these five things. Amen? Put it off. All right? Come on, tell your neighbor, put it off. Tell your other neighbor, shake his shirt. And say, put it off, man. Paul also tells the same thing. Similar ways of Peter's description. Paul also tells the Ephesians just like this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. It says like this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and uh, clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So just like how God forgave you, we need to forgive others rather than speaking ill of others. Yes? Put away all these things. Be good to people. That's what, that's what Peter says. Coming back to a portion of scriptures, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, this is the, the main part. It says, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. King James Version says like this, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now here in this, in this scripture, Peter is saying like newborn babies, newborn babies. And it's not a normal child, it's basically infants, just born child. That's what the metaphor which Peter is bringing out here. Like newborn babies who desires. So the, the thing is here, as a child desires the mother's milk, so should our desires be. So should our desires be, our needs be. Like newborn babies. He's not mentioned... He, this is not a reference for, like, uh, Paul tells, how come you want milk only? Aren't you grown up enough, mature enough to become uh, adults to eat meat? That's not what we're talking about. That is, Paul is giving a different analogy there. Here, Peter is giving a separate metaphor, a separate analogy. He's saying, desire as newborn babies. Desire milk. That's how suppose we are supposed to desire. Craving for milk. In our lives. Desire. This is a very strong word. Desire. Long for it. Eager for, for some milk. You know, sometimes when you're thirsty, you want to drink water. Eager. In Psalms 42, 1, which says, uh, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants after thee. Right? As the deer. Just as the deer pants. Have you seen panting? <laughs> like this dog. <laughs> you know, you know, panting. They want water. Water, 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 water. You know, you want water. So like today, you should be like, milk, 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 milk. I want milk. Milk. All mothers know, right, how kids are, how the babies are, infants are. They desire milk. The only thing they desire is milk, 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 right? Every time milk. Drink milk. How often do babies drink milk? How often? Two hours? Two hours, three hours. Every two hours, three hours, a child will cry for the milk. 
So in this, that's, that's the way Peter, that's an analogy Peter is bringing out here saying, you need to desire spiritual things or the word just like that. As you go, often go. And it's also remember this, when the child cries, the mothers produce milk, right? It's more at that time. That instigation is there. That relationship is what is Peter talking about here. Running after desiring milk, desiring, desiring. So what is this milk that Peter is talking about here? What is the milk we're talking about here? First Peter 2, 2, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk. Long for what? Pure spiritual milk. What is the milk here talked about? It's pure and it's spiritual. Pure and spiritual. Two aspects of it. Now, this spiritual, there's a translation confusion among people. The word here is called logikos. Logikos, that's the word. In, in many translations translated as spiritual, but in the King James Version that I showed you earlier, it is translated as a word. Pure milk of the word. Another translation, pure spiritual milk. Most of the scholars think it is milk, even though milk represents the word, that's what they think. But it need not be. It can be also anything spiritual. So in order to understand this, just, we'll just go back a few verses, the verses that we read a few weeks back, then you'll understand what Peter is talking about here. Let's start at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 onwards. It says, since you have been born again, not of flesh, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. So put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all stuff. So the chapter 2 starts with so, right? Verse 1 says, so put away. Or in some translation it says, therefore. Why is it therefore? Because of the previous verse. The previous verse, that is verse 25, talks about, about the word of God, which is a good news that is preached to you. Because of the good news, the word of God preached to you, put away all this and log. So many scholars say that what Paul's intention here is about the word of God. Or it could be anything spiritual also. That's what scholars argue about it. So desire that milk. Desire the word of God which is the milk. Taste. You know the taste. And verse 3 actually says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. If indeed you have tasted the Lord is good, desire it more. Because you've tasted the Lord is good, desire it more. So you have tasted God, desire it more. Desire more of it. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How do we taste God? How do we taste God? Like ice stick, ice cream stick. Uh, do you lick? How do you taste and see God is good? You experience Him. He said, blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. When you take refuge in God, when you have the protection of God, the salvation of God, when you taste and see that, when you, when you experience the healing power of God, when you experience the miraculous favor of God in your life, when you taste and see these things, you know that, that our God is good. You've tasted Him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That, that, because you've tasted that, desire that milk. Desire the milk. The pure milk. Peter tells about pure milk. No flavored milks, please. Strawberry milk, banana milk, chocolate milk. Any kinds of milk? No. Peter says, desire the pure milk. You don't give strawberry milk to a baby infant, right? You don't do that. You give the pure milk. The pure milk that comes from the mother, that is what you give infants, newborn babies. Pure spiritual milk. Desire that. We, we need to desire that. You don't need to do any processing for that milk, right? There's no processing required for it. It is pure. This kind of milk you can't get anywhere else. It's got full of antibodies. It protects the child from all kinds of disease and sicknesses. It is so precious. Just like that, Paul, Peter is saying here, desire that milk. Desire that milk. Yeah? So taste. Uh, Psalms 34, yeah, we saw it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. 
blessed is the man who takes refuge in the lord so the lord so when we taste and see you grow spiritually you grow in the lord you grow bigger and bigger in the lord jeremiah 15:16 says your words were found and i ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart for i am called by your name o lord god of host what did the word become your words were found and i ate them how do you eat the word you taste god eat his word you you and and, and you dwell in that word okay. and the word becomes a joy and a delight in my heart has it ever happened to you and i'm sure it has in our lives that when we read a word suddenly something sparks bright in your heart something sparks really great when you're in trouble you can read the verse that says i have plans for you plans to prosper you and it builds you up certain verses when you read at certain times jumps up at you it strikes strikes you so you taste and see how good god is you eat on the lord on the word amen like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that you may grow up into salvation how do you grow up into salvation does it mean that you will be saved only if you read the word of god that's what it means we are at first peter chapter 2 verse 2 like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation does that mean you will be saved only if you read the word of god that's not what it means here means is to grow into salvation to grow into that status of being saved you need to read the word of god you are saved your spirit man is saved but for your body and the rest of the realms of yours to be saved you need to grow into it salvation is a state of being delivered or preserved from harm being saved growing into that bringing see the more you read the word of god you understand better and certain things come alive in your heart sometimes you're bad in studies you are saved probably but you're weak in your studies but then the word of god says god is wisdom he gives if you ask for wisdom he will give it to you when you read the word of god when you taste that word of god when that comes alive in your heart your knowledge and wisdom and that realms become saved your studies realm become saved you grow into that ultimate salvation and let me tell you until death until the rapture happens we are all growing into that salvation amen growing into salvation can you turn to the neighbor and say grow into salvation yes so when paul is talk peter is talking about a like newborn infants long for spiritual milk what is peter trying to say desire milk more more i know the title of the today's was i need milk but is that what peter is talking about here is peter talking about okay now today onwards nido and anchor is going to be my focus right get nido get an anchor today no more no more coffee tea now my quiet time is going to be with a glass of milk <laughs> put a glass of milk oh lord i desire you by the milk the milk is here i desire the word of god is here what is actually is peter is peter's focus on the milk what is peter's focus on peter's focus here is not on the milk and probably you can take milk as a criteria yes but peter's focus here is on the relationship between a mother and a baby that is what peter is highlighting here like newborn infants who long for pure spiritual milk when a child cries when a child cries what does the mother do ha avan karayata no right the the instinct of the mother immediately is what get the child feed the child am i right that's all mothers wave your hands please agreed all agree that get the child feed the child right that's your instinct and the child is and the, for the child the only the only resource the child has for salvation in his realm is the mother right this is the relationship which peter is trying to bring out here it is not the milk 
It is the relationship between the mother and the infant. That is what Peter is bringing out here. And that is what Peter talks about here. You know, this bonding of a relationship between mother and child, can we have with our God? Do we have a relationship like that with our God? Do we have a relationship? Do we cry out? Do we call God, talk to God in any and all situations of our life? How often do you pray? Once a day? Morning and evening? But how often does a child cry for milk? Some of you mothers are like, every hour he is crying for milk, right? <laughs> you run out of milk sometimes also. But that is what Peter is talking about here. Do you run to God as much as a child runs to the mother? A child cries for the milk. Do you run to God? When God created man, it was supposed to be like that. Adam was created with a fellowship with God, right? God used to come to fellowship with Adam in, in the cool of day. He used to come and talk to him. You know, how are you, Adam? Can you imagine that? God coming and saying, putting God, putting his arms on your shoulder and saying, Hey man, how are you? How's the garden I gave you? How are the plants? How's the apple tree? God used to have fellowship with Adam. Of course, then sin came. They were cut out. The next person you can see in scriptures is Enoch. Enoch walked with God. The relationship with Enoch, Enoch had with God was so beautiful. Do you know that the, <clears throat> the I was, see, I was uh, yeah, Enoch's son is Methuselah. Enoch was taken up to God and he walked with God. And his son lived the longest in the world. There may be a relation there between with God and your offsprings living long. Enoch walked with God. A close relationship with God. He, so much that he never died. That's what scripture says. That God took him. God buried him. Enoch walked with God. The next person you see in the scriptures who really had a close intimate relationship is David. Right? David had a wonderful relationship with God. He used to talk to God in the wilderness when he's sitting with the sheep. He used to talk, communicate. And the psalms that he's written, beautiful psalms he's written about God. Amen? That is the kind of relationship which Peter is bringing out here to the church. Not about milk. Guys, don't focus on nido and anchor and all that. That is not the point. The point here is the relationship that you can have with the Father. Shall we all, let's all cultivate that. You know what, if you have envy and malice and deceit, you can't have a relationship with God. That close, intimate relationship, you can't. If you want to have a good relationship with God, you need to keep away all the evil, put away all that. The five things Peter is talking about, all kinds of evil, put it away. And get one-to-one -one with God. A relationship with God. A close-knit relationship, like the baby and the mother's relationship. Have a close relationship with God. Psalm 16 verse 8 says like this. This is Psalmist David. He said like this. I have set the Lord always before me. Do you know when, when, the, when the baby is drinking milk, who is in front of the baby? The mother, right? When the baby is drinking milk, the mother is the only person in front. In the same way, David is saying here, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. The Lord is always before me. Can you, can you pictureize that? Baby, mother, David, God. That intimate relationship is what Peter is asking here. Now you mothers, I'll ask you one more question. If there are five babies kept there, do you know which is your baby's cry? Yes? <laughs> you all know, right? Even if they sound same, you know which is your baby's cry. Am I right? It's so much so, it's confusing for men. For the fathers, very confusing. But let me tell you, when the baby cries, you know it's for milk or it's for poo-poo. Am I right? The mothers know, right? Which crying is for poo-poo, which crying is for milk. Am I right? Mothers? Yes? Are you okay? No? <laughs> I remember when we were bringing the kids up, Preta is no, oh, one ducky with you. You know, the mother, you know. So the moment they cry, the mother knows. That, that is the kind of relationship between the mother and the baby. And that is what Peter is encouraging you to have with God the Father. That kind of a relationship. Like Adam had, like Enoch had, like David had a relationship 
that you can speak to. So much so that Jesus said in John 10, 14 and 15 said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for my sheep. So that relationship, Jesus himself is saying to the church that God and me, I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. Amen. God loves us so much. He's taken special care to make sure that we are safe and protected. He knows us. Just like the mother will protect the child and know whatever happens. You know, when somebody touches your child, what happens to mothers? <sighs> what happens when anybody touches the child? Huh? What happens to the mothers? The mothers become like she bears, <sighs> grizzly bears. Not teddy bears, grizzly bears. And they attack the attacker, right? That is the relationship mothers have to the child. So much so that sometimes when we, when I discipline some mother children, I get that looks from the mother. Ninda you know, marinike, I get that looks. So mother, that relationship is there between God and us. So much so that you are the apple of God's eye. Anybody, anything touches you, it touches the father. Amen? That is how precious we are to God. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 and 7 says like this. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will deliver you from slavery to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you by my, to my, I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of Egyptians. Amen? Isn't our God so good? Can you tell to your neighbor, man, my father is good. Shake off. Shake off. Come on, shake off. Tell them, shake off all malice, evil. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yes. Tatikala. You don't need that anymore. My father is good. He will take care of it. Amen? How many feel you that my father is good? Yes, our father is good. Come on, shout out, my father is good. Amen. He is good. If he saved his people from the Egyptian slavery, then he can deliver me too. If he's done it before, he can deliver me too. Amen. The Old Testament is for that, written for us, recorded for us. If he's done it before, he can do it now too. And we are his children. We are his sheep. We are his precious children. That relationship, we need, to, we need to come into that relationship. Amen? I'm going to close here. How often do we go back to God? How often do we go back to God? We all face issues in life. How often do we go back to God? When a child needs milk, the child cries and the mother goes, mother feeds. If a worldly mother with human instincts can do so much, how much more will be our spiritual heavenly father who is almighty and all powerful who can take care of you? Yes? Can you imagine that? And he's available. He wants to be in that relationship with you. He wants to be in that relationship with you. He wants that. And today the Holy Spirit is telling you, long for it, desire for it. Desire for it. I know none of you adults will remember the time when you were breastfed by your mother. You will not remember. But you have seen how children are fed by the mothers. Peter is encouraging you guys, go back to God. Let's have that relationship. Let's have the relationship back to God. Can we do that? He wants it. I need milk. More than that, I need the relationship. I need the word of God. God, He is word. In the beginning was the word. The word became flesh and dwell among us, right? The word of God. He Himself, the word Himself, I need that. Read the, Whenever you have time, whenever you get time, read the scriptures. Let the scriptures come to life in us. Let us grow together into the salvation which we already obtained. 
Let us grow into that. Let our minds and our thoughts all grow into that salvation. That we are saved already. Yes? Let us grow complete into that. Let us be complete. Yes? Agreed? So tomorrow onwards, or today onwards, when you have a desire, what are you going to do? Run to the fridge. <laughs> run, to, run to our Father. He desires that. Amen.